we are literally in the bull market, folks. So we um, we need to start thinking differently. For that, wait, who's who's new here, by the way? Who's never been to an RT event before? Holy shit! Well, thank you. That's the ball. Thank you so much. But basically, one of the things, we meet up every two months, pretty much, and for the last year and a half, it's been full bear market mentality, as in, because the things that you do in a bear market is completely different to what you should do in a bull market. Um, so now, um, if my fractals are, are correct, we are basically a third of the way through the bull market. Like, we're in it. Most people don't realize it until it gets to this sort of blow off top phase, but we are, by very definition, from cycle low to cycle high, we are about a third of the way in. So we now need to start tweaking the way that we operate. Um, but long story short, it's basically up now until December 2025. Now, obviously, nothing today is financial advice. I have to make that abundantly clear for the FCA. Hi, hi, FCA. Um, so everything I say is just my, it's like you're getting an opinion from someone at the pub. So. <laughs> um, but things are heating up in the last 30 days. Things are starting to accelerate, um, which I think the public aren't really seeing. So Thailand, obviously, you know, that's, that's, that's the best country in the world, no. Um, Thailand has actually been like the most anti-crypto country in the world. Like, they've been right up there. Basically, Thailand do whatever the US tells them to do. It's like a, it's like a little poodle on the, on the, on the lap of, of America. Um, but now they've suddenly just shedded that sort of uh, anti-crypto skin and they're now getting heavy into uh, crypto. The, you think getting a crypto account open in the UK is hard? Try getting a Thai crypto account open. Um, yeah, so the UK is now trying to, uh, they uh, recently introduced a proposal to introduce stable coins into the economy. And I think that's going to tie in very closely with DigiPound or Digi Sterling, whatever they want to call the, the CBDC. Uh, Euroclear, which is a Europe's biggest or one of the biggest clearing houses, uh, just issued a tokenized Digi Euro bond worth, I think, 104 million dollars. That that is game changing. This is this is the sort of stuff that you won't see in the news, but these are seismic shifts shifts happening uh, behind the scenes. So the big boys are getting in, and I wouldn't be surprised to see if the real world tokenized asset market is bigger than crypto in itself. Um, so it's going to be like a bit of a, a splinter. BlackRock, obviously, files for uh, ETH, ETF, it's going to be big. And what's quite surprising is that a lot of banks are using JP Morgan's permissioned blockchain and their, their coin Onyx, which I find weird. I find it weird that Barclays is using another bank's stuff. But hey ho, it's happening. UBS is launching a crypto ETF. Japanese Superbank Nomura uh, has just launched a, an Ethereum fund. Am I just am I thinking things? We were just over there a second ago. Ah, cool. That's Steve, by the way. You'll, you'll meet him later. Um, he's he's my second capo. So I've got two chief anti fuck up officers in my life. My wife is my first, and Steve is my second capo. Yes. Um, <laughs> And uh, I, uh, I basically try and ignore them as much as possible. And annoyingly, they're normally quite right. So one of these days, I'm going to prove them wrong. <laughs> um, yeah, and the JP Morgan crypto handles a billion dollars a day in transactions. So there's real volume uh, and throughput going through there. So without further ado, I think we need to hand it over to Harry. Now, by the way, two days ago, I realized I forgot something in, pre in preparation for today. And that is intro videos for guest speakers. So on Wednesday, sometimes Wednesday afternoon, I went to Lewis, you probably all met Lewis. I was like, dude, I screwed up. I forgot the intro videos. Can you get, make a 30 second intro video, get, you know, get someone to make 30 second intro videos to all of the, the guest speakers today? And he was like, yeah, sure, he's on it. Now, he's really good at everything. He is like my, my brain. But I have to warn you, some of the videos are good, but all the facts and information in my video is completely wrong. It's all unfactual, OK? <laughs> so just take these intro videos with a pinch of salt. They're done in like a day. So. Um...
Get ready to ride the crypto wave with the master navigator himself. Meet the head realistic trader mentor, The Beacon, guiding you through the cryptocurrency wild west. In weekly sessions, he not only keeps you ahead of the curve, but spills the beans on where he's putting his own money. He's a Call of Duty conqueror, taking on enemies and giving Siam a run for his money. But today, he's here to prep you for the bull markets. Get ready to capitalize with the one and only, our guide through the crypto wilderness, Harry Harrigan. <laughs> to the video, is it everything we call that one here? Probably not there, but it's all good. Um, for those of you who have ever watched an event of the video, you know that I can't keep any timing, so I'm just going to set my phone to try and run, because let's just make sure. Last time I did it was 40 minutes. Let's hope it's the same, shall we? Um, thanks for that time. Uh, thanks for the intro. No, like I said, it pumps you up, that does. No doubt whatsoever. Um, for those of you that don't know me, and you've come to the couple of men, who the hell is this guy? And why is he speaking before everyone else is? And I'm not sure either, but um, <laughs> probably just because I did my slides first. Uh, okay. That wasn't one of my slides, but there we go. Um, and what's stranger still is the first thing we're going to talk about today is how to survive a bull market, which just seems ludicrous because we all know in bull markets that all we really have to do is watch the charts go up, see the value of Bitcoin increase, and then just bank, piggy bank all the money. So. What's so difficult about surviving that? But unfortunately, it is a bit more difficult than this. And 18 months ago, I stood on this stage and we did a bear market survival. And that was pretty easy, although I dragged it out for 40 minutes, because I just said, just do what we've done for thousands of years as humans. In times of crisis, retreat and protect yourself. And that was it. You know, just stay on the sidelines. Don't worry about doing anything. The market will turn, sentiment will turn, and then you'll be ready to redeploy. And we're kind of at that stage. I have a bit of a different opinion from Simon's view of if we're in the bull market or still in the consolidation period, but it doesn't matter. We're close to the bull market um, with how you look at it. So some of you are already back in the market and some of you are about to get back in the market. But now we actually take one of our greater challenges because, see if my slides are in the right order, we actually do need to take this relatively seriously because actually there's a lot more challenges that we're going to face in a bull market because you're actually going to have to do some of them and you're going to have to face those about them in quite a bit of detail. And the biggest thing that we're going to face is our emotions and greed. And, and I ain't a Gordon Gecko. Greed is actually not good. So we've got to try and manage where that's going because, well, I'll put it this way. Do you use trade still? And do you use platforms like FXCM? Because whenever you boot that up, there's a little warning there, isn't there? And it says, I, can't, I think the thing changes every time. Last time I went on, 67% fail to make money. Fail to make money. Okay, they may break out, get out of break even, but let's just assume actually that 70% fail to make money. They lose money in the crypto market, sorry, in the Forex markets. Well, we're talking about crypto here. I mean, it's the Wild West, isn't it? It's volatile, it's lawless, there's no regulation, everybody hates us, it's full of scams. So actually, 70%, that might be a bit generous. We may be looking at higher than that. But we're in a community, we're in RT, we're trying to learn. So let's just assume, be optimists here that actually we're talking more about 50%. 50% of us may not make any money. You look to the person next to you, it's you or them. I mean, that's it. So how can people not make money in a bull market? If prices are always going up, how is it that these stats still live, still with us? And it is, it's strange. Oh, here we go. Warren Buffett said it, so it must be true. Um, so I, I don't have many slides of charts, don't worry. Um, but let's have a look at this one. Let's try and get the laser out, there we go. That there, most of you should know what that chart is. I mean, if you've been in the crypto long enough, that day there is the peak in 2021, 8th of November 2021, 69,000 and a dollar. Anyone here get out of the market then? No, well, we're all losers, aren't we? You know, because the signs were clear, weren't they? Surely we all knew that that was going to be the top of the market. We all knew that that's where it was. I mean, I wasn't there on Twitter saying 100K by Christmas, I promise you. I mean, you know, <laughs> don't you worry about that. Because, no, well, we had, we had the April Valley. We had the pullback. Pump back up. Momentum's there, guys. We're going to make it 100K, no problem. And that's what we all thought. But nobody left the market there. I mean, actually, I think we all sold our vaults and moved into rebase and DAOs. And we know how that went. Um, but more realistic, we were here. 
Well, I was anyway. Months later, between 50 and 42,000, I realized we had the rejection. It's bear market time, guys, and we got out. Now, some of us got out of break even, some of us didn't. Now, I, I should have mentioned, although I may have got in here in October 21, I put another 50K in, you know, so I thought we own 100K, I'll just double that money, no problem. So actually, even though I did get out in profit, that 50K wasn't. That, so we've all, fa well, I failed. I should speak just about my experience. I know some of you have told me about yours as well. We all failed. To, so I'm trying to understand what mistakes did I make the last bull run in which I can try and improve on that. But who am I? Some of you don't know me. And so five minutes, not even five minutes, two minutes. So I've known Simon since 2005. He was 18 when I met him. We were in the Air Force, both joined on the same day. And we kind of left the Air Force at the same time. I don't know, I left in 2012, I'm not sure when. I think it was about 2011. And we always stayed in touch. And then I think October 2017, I get a Facebook message from Siam. It's kind of, I don't know if it was actually from Siam, it's probably just from RT. Have you ever heard of Bitcoin? I, I'll be the one, I'm the only one here. Never heard of Bitcoin until 2017. Eh? Hear those stories, don't you? People saying, oh yeah, I mined it in 2013, but I lost it all. Never heard of it, watched the video. And at the end of the link, Siam said, if you join up, Within a week of watching this video, you can have 12 month subscription for free. So I said, like, okay, I'll do that. I hopped into, into uh, the real estate trader, didn't bother watching a single video, opened up an exchange, I bought my first Bitcoin. Well, I think it was the 8th of December in 2017. Now, why is that important? That was the day that Bitcoin got to 19 grand and we never saw it go any higher. So I bought a Bitcoin on the height of the market. Um, but I never left. I never left. I never learned my lesson. Um, and I just kept on staying in crypto and I've been in now for six years come next month. And this will be my third bull market, I suppose. Done two bear markets. So I've had quite a decent amount of experience. And when the group started picking up in 2020, I'd say I was pretty helpful. I was obviously sharing my opinions and my thoughts. And for some reason, Simon thought that that was good information. So he asked me to become a mentor and Avenger and a little plug here. I do a live stream every Wednesday, sorry, every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Some of you will have seen and will see the recordings, but it's kind of a different stance to what Simon does on his Thursdays, but hopefully it just gives you an overview of a much sort of holistic view of crypto and the problems that we're facing or the potential um, good things we're facing. But I have a pretty decent experience in crypto. I mean, six years experience doesn't sound like a long time, but for crypto, that's longer than some of your favorite altcoins have been around. So. Yeah, I've done spot trading, I've been scammed, I've been hacked, I've sent stuff to the wrong place, I've done mining, pointing at Josh there. Um, you know, and I feel like I've at least got an opinion that I can help people out. And if you ever do have an issue, and trust me, we will have issues. We had so many issues in the last bull run, just hopping and people not understanding it. Just always just send me a message. And I, not trying to blow my own trumpet, but I don't think anyone can say that I've never got back to them within about 24 hours if you've got a problem. I've stayed up with people till 4 a.m. trying to recover funds for them. So, you know, if you ever do have an issue, then feel free to uh, give this guy a shout. Right, enough about me. We're going to talk about a few things that I feel we need to do to <coughs> survive this bull market. And the first one for me has to be remaining informed, remaining involved. Because if you don't pay attention to what's about to come, you're going to get an 800 pound bull stab you in the ass like these two are. But it isn't going to be an 800 pound bull. It's going to be a $5 trillion bull market. And your couple of thousand or 10,000, 100,000, whatever it's going to be, is going to be trampled on. Okay, it's going to be exit liquidity. So I think bull markets last for around about 18 months, circa 12 to 18 months. But crypto is a technology. And we know that technology advancements happen so quickly that every 18 months, technology power normally doubles anyway. Well, crypto moves so fast that if you're just going off the information that you had last bull market or what you think you know at the start of this bull market, it's going to be completely out of date by the time the next bull market has come around. So there's more than six, but I'm just going to go through six things I think we should do. Number five is the most important. And for those of you that can't be asked to do the previous four, just pay attention to number five. Overall narrative, understanding where the crypto market is. What's the general sentiment of the crypto market. Now, it's pretty easy. We're in a bull market. So the overall narrative is positive. But actually, let's take that to a wider thing. I don't need you to be a fiscal scholar. You don't need to know the ins and outs of monetary policies or anything. But I would argue that understanding where 
the US economy, don't really care about the UK economy, is it's going to give you a good understanding of where crypto can potentially go. And wh why do I say that? Well, simply, are we in a period of quantitative easing, quantitative tightening? Are we in an inflationary period? Are we you know, in a period in which actually we're trying to um, deflate the, the monetary supply? Why is that important? And do you really need to be studying every single financial chart out there? No, you don't need to study the charts, but just know, are the money printers turned on? Because if the money printers are turned on, that's going to help Bitcoin. That's going to give Bitcoin a fair wind. If it's not, Bitcoin can still go up, but it's got its own challenges. Now, Satoshi Nakamoto may be a genius because he linked the halvening cycles to the US elections. I don't think he did it on purpose. But why are the US elections important for our overall narrative? Because politicians are trying to keep their job. So they're promising anything under the sun, which usually means they want to spend money. And to spend that money, they need to print the money, which is ultimately going to help it. So just having an understanding of where we sit with that, I think personally will help. Emerging sectors. OK, so we're in crypto. We understand the crypto narrative. But actually, we need to see where the focus is, is going to be within these sectors. And, and sectors do pop up. We look back to 2021. We had NFTs. We had uh, DeFi, we had gaming and metaverse, I suppose. And why is paying attention to emerging sectors, ones that are getting more hype, more important? Because that focus on them is going to help that price increase faster on those sectors than potentially on the others. And if we're here to maximize our potential, we may want to alter whatever plan we have to find a narrative that is now moving forward. And we don't know what those narratives are going to be. Probably AI, probably a second stab at uh, gaming. DeFi 3.0, I suppose, will give it another shot, but we don't know. But when it comes around, you just want to know what it is because you might think, I'm going to hop on that, and I had no interest in it beforehand, and I actually don't really care about AI, but if that's where the money's going to be, then I'll move towards that. Um, security issues. Security, bad actors, hacked, hacks, whatever you want to call them. We do need to pay attention, unfortunately, to this because if you had stuck your head in the sand during the bear market, and you're firing up your old uh, exchange accounts again, today and you go, I'll just, I'll just log back onto FTX. You know, it was the second biggest exchange back when I last used it. <laughs> well, it isn't now because it had a prick called Sam Bankman Freed running it and he wasn't very good at his job and it doesn't exist. And yeah, okay, you didn't have to, you could have still kept your head in the sand and you'd know about Sam Bankman Freed and FTX, but the principle's still the same that that last bear market, we took out a few bad actors, but there will be more. There'll be people that we think now are good guys that actually become shady people. and. If you're, if you're attached to that exchange or that project or whatever, that narrative can suddenly change and suddenly you need to be able to move. So those kind of things can catch you up pretty quickly. And if it is something that you've invested in and you aren't paying attention, your portfolio of that sector, which was green, can suddenly go red very quickly. So understanding who they are and what they are. I will just say with security, technology improves, but so do the scammers and how they can hack your devices. So always having a sort of some understanding of how to protect yourself. And a lot of us use cold wallet storages at the moment. There are still sophisticated ways around people to get to that. So if we start finding out that Ledger does have a backdoor to it or whatever, you might want to decide that actually that isn't for me, particularly if you, you know, it's your money, it's thousands of pounds, maybe hundreds of thousands of pounds. So making sure that you understand how well it's protected is going to be important there. Ugh, regulation, I mean, can't go anywhere with it. And this is dull, isn't it? No one cares about regulation at the moment, certainly not in a bull market. But we kind of need to just understand where we're going. There isn't regulation at the moment. When that comes out, unfortunately, it is going to change us. That's definitely one I would try and keep your head in the sand and just wait for point number five. Um, but I'll tie in with that governments and banks because we know the UK is shit at the moment in terms of on-ramping. But I will tell you that that will change in the bull market. It always gets crap in bear markets. And then bull markets, they come back in. It's not too bad. And then we look at government agencies. I mean, the, the, the golden ETF hopefully come in 2024. I think it is a when, not an if, but when that happens, you want to be the right side of your engagement in the market rather than waiting and then afterwards Bitcoin shooting up. Okay, this is the one. This is it. Ignore the previous four. Communities. Stay involved in your communities, whether you're in RT at the moment, whether you're in other communities. This is where you're going to find that information. Because if you can't be asked to do it, and we've all got lives, fair enough, Someone in the community is going to talk about all of these big points anyway. So you don't even have to be particularly active. We're just reading through, seeing what people are generally talking about. You'll get a feel for the narrative yourself. So it doesn't necessarily matter. 
But what I will say with the communities, in bull markets, they're actually kind of fun. People are happy, people are writing, people are talking and sharing ideas. And it is, it's intense, because I think we, we measured in the last bull run how many uh, posts we had a day on Discord. I think we're getting to like 1,700 posts a day. So it is hard to keep up with all that, I get it. But it's because people are excited and sharing their portfolios, happy with new ideas. It's a lot better place than the bear markets are. Um, and then the last one, practice makes perfect. Yeah, we've all done trading before. You've all understand trading ideas. Some of you, like me, I've not traded, like, trade for Chances are, if I go straight back into it, cold turkey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to balls that up, even in a rising tide of a... So if that is your boat and that is what you like doing, just keep doing it. A lot of the strategies we talk about require a trending market. And for the last 12 months, yeah, certainly this year, we've been ranging so much that you might have felt like they're failures. But just keep practicing, keep plugging away. You're going to get that trend in market, and then you're going to be able to take advantage of that. What have we got next? Oh, risk again. Okay. Um, why does it say that? It sounds dull, doesn't it? I, I hate standing up here and being the guy that's like risk manager, risk management. But with bull markets, we do need to think about risk. Otherwise, you're going to be like this guy falling off and getting trampled all over. And I, I know. Ugh. Risk appetite, right? What is your risk appetite? Understand it because yours is different to mine. And hats off to those of you that went 100% into CAS because I was telling you not to do that. You know, because if, in my view, that's a risk because if CAS didn't play out and it suddenly goes the wrong way, you, you're down 100%, you've got nothing left to do. But for those of you that played off, it worked well. You've got to kind of link it to your goals though because if you do want 100x your portfolio, you can't just stick it all in Bitcoin because that ain't going to work. So you've got to try and balance what your risk appetite is realistically with where your goals are going to be. Um, and you may find that, well, my goals are not realistic now to my risk appetite because I don't want to put it in a token that's not seen a bull market before. I'd rather stick it in Bitcoin. But then you're going to have to say, well, OK, I'm only going to have to accept a 5x or whatever and just take it from there. In terms of risk tolerance and sort of goals, I think long, medium and, and short term, they, they will all be different. Long term for me is what are you doing with Bitcoin after this cycle? Are you just in it to make some money now, go back to fiat? That's absolutely fine. Or are you one of these people that think fiat's dead and need to have some cryptocurrency for 30 years down the line? Because you're going to do things differently. Medium, I'd say, would be this cycle. Short is swing day trading, whatever it is that you want to do. Um, but whatever it is, just accept it. It's yours. It doesn't matter. Don't feel embarrassed about it if it's different to Simon's, mine, everyone else you at the table with. Because they ain't going to give a shit if things go wrong for you. You know, they're not going to be trying to help you out. They're going to protect themselves as well. So just do what is right for you going through. I mean, sorry, guys, this is it. Cliche warning. It really is. And I, I will get through this slide as quick as I can. But you cannot do a slide on this without saying, don't use more than you can afford to lose. I would recommend don't max out credit cards, remortgage your house. People have done this last time. OK, so that's why I mention it. Taking out bank loans, lying to your bank about what it is, and then putting it into the bull market right at the peak. Why do I say that? Because 50% of us are going to lose. So the chances are, if you're one of those DGENs that have done all of those, you might be the person that's not emotionally ready to actually take some profit when it's the right time. I'd strongly suggest not borrowing from friends and family and obviously not steal. But the, that's not what I meant. I just had to put that slide in. Um, what I'm talking about now is not affording to risk, sorry, not losing what you can afford to. It's profits. So we're all going to see our portfolios go green, okay? Most of you have probably seen it just be red for 12 months. It's going to start to go green. You're going to start to make plans. You're going to start to think, all right, I'm going to buy a car. I'm going to treat the family, whatever it's going to be. And trust me, these, it's, it's an amazing feeling, a bull market, if you've not done one before. You start to make those plans. And suddenly, you think that profit's real. You think it's already in your bank, but it's actually just a paper profit. And if things change because you haven't planned for this, you are losing that as well as potentially whatever your seed money was. And the deeper, as I say there, we get into the bull market, the more apparent that is. Because you'll make, trust me, I, I know it sounds crazy, you'll go and check out Lambos and all that kind of stuff. Because, because it, you, you're like, shit, I can actually afford one. But you can't yet, right? Um, but as you get deeper, 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 you could realize you can afford three. And you're like, oh, one for each day of the week, whatever it is. Now, I mentioned this at the beginning, appropriate time to add money to the market. This is, this is, this is where I messed up because I added that 50K right at the market top. I'm not telling you not to add money into the market. But what I would say for you guys in the room 
is we're here in the consolidation period. I would, I would suggest that feel, get to feel comfortable now about putting what you can in now and waiting rather than when the hype picks up and everybody's talking about crypto and it's full bull. I love the way that sounds, full bull. Um, because we've got an opportunity to do it now, but there will be newbies that will come in a couple of months before the end and they'll still make something from it. So you, yeah, add money to the market, but I'd suggest three weeks of green candles, perhaps wait for a pullback, just time how you're gonna do that. Um, so that if it does reverse and you have unfortunately put it in right at the end of the market, that's such a heavy loss compared to the rest, it's gonna drag your portfolio down. So again, it's just about risk of what you think you can afford to lose. Um, how I do it, I'm not saying it's right, we've spent the last 12, 18 months thinking, balancing my nerves of how I feel about where the market's going versus how cheap can I really get this token that I'm after. And that, you know, I DCA'd in for 12 months, that's kind of worked for us. What you want to do is a narrative shift, a mind change to when is it too expensive to buy? Actually, you know what? Bitcoin's above 40K. I don't really want to buy it when it gets above that. So that will help you go, right, well, anytime it's under it and we've had a healthy pullback, I'm going to buy. If it dips over 40, not going to do it, but we pull back to 35, whatever it is, you've got that narrative going forward of, okay, it's under being too expensive to buy. Now, you might think that's an all-time high from the previous cycle, whatever, it doesn't matter, but that certainly helped me refocus where I'm going. And yeah, profits, we'll talk about that in a bit. Emotions. Unfortunately, this is the one that's going to catch us all out, me included. And it's greed. Greed, ultimately, because there is no feeling like a bull market. For those of you that have been in them, and you remember 2021, so beginning of 2021, that lead up January, February, the alts just went ballistic. And we're checking your portfolio every hour, not because you're worried about what you were losing, because you were making thousands and thousands every time you looked at it. And it is great, you know, and you can't be prepared for it because let's face it, for the last two years, we've all been too embarrassed to show our face to people in public and telling them that we're in crypto. <laughs> we have, like, because we've been the laughing stock. But in two years' time, with those same people who are going to be like, you were so lucky that you were in. What a great move. Hero that you are, you know. Don't know how you found out about all that information, etc. Um, and it, you, know, you just punch you up. You, you feel like you can walk on water. But actually, deep down, you're still going to feel a few things. Uh, you're going to be tested because every time it pulls back, you're going to worry about where that's been. You're going to doubt some of the decisions. You're going to make plans today, maybe not literally today, but around this period, which in 18 months' time, you're going to go, now nah, I know it. I know it different now. The market's moved. Sod that, that plan I made there, that exit decision. You're going to question those decisions. And we will make mistakes. You know, we will get caught up in the hype. Of course we will. We're only human. Um, and that's easier said than done, trick not to avoid being this. That's a, that's a line I can put in there. I'll be sucked in. I definitely will. I'll, I'll get caught up in the euphoria. But hopefully as a community, by following step five, many eyes on the same problem. We'll all kind of wake ourselves up to where we potentially are going. And this is what I was just talking about. You're not a genius. The bull market just makes you look special, makes you look like you can do what you can do. You'll think we can't make mistakes, you know, because we haven't. We've all found that token that no one had ever heard of that was tiny micro cap and look at us. We, we, we were geniuses for following Simon to Kaz. Should I say follow Josh into Kaz, by the way? There's the real hero. Um, don't get too excited. Uh, you'll think you're better than you are, particularly when it comes to trading, because what will happen is you'll sell up trading and it'll be a rising market, so you'll just do longs, because why, why would you do shorts? And you'll start with your risk appetite that you've been used to in the bear market. And you'll win 15, 20, 30, 40 trades in a row. And you'll think, I'm going to just up it. I'm going to put more in. I'm going to be a bit more degen. And the market knows. It just waits. And you go full hog, no stop loss. And then it's like, right. I was going to, I was going to swear then, but you might want this for YouTube. Um, and the market will humble you. It will absolutely ruin you. So we'll wait those mistakes. I mentioned that we'll write off decisions, plans that we've made today, taking profits particularly. You'll go, actually, I'm not going to take profit now because I've improved, I've evolved, I'm better than what I was back then. I won't be persuaded by the hype that's here, even though I made that plan in the cold light of day. And you'll put it off. And this one, I think, th this one's probably the bullish news. Like, yeah, we'll all stay in the community if you don't read it yourself. We'll all read and talk about bullish and bearish news but we'll write off and bearish news we won't care that cz 
is found out to be, I don't know, I was going to say something really naughty then, but found out to be a not very nice guy. Um, we won't care because we're in the bull market, that won't affect us or whatever. We'll buy it off and we'll give more weight to bullish news because we want it to be true. We want to keep on improving our portfolios and going. So now we get to the crux of greed. And it is greed. That's why 50%, 80%, whatever, won't make any money. Because the grass is always greener. So why take profit now? Well, don't take profit now. Uh, why take profit during the bull run on the way up when if I just keep that in the market, I'm about to take even more profit later on? Because of the first slide I showed you. We don't know when the top's going to be. So actually trying to have some idea of taking profit. I know, guys, I know. Here's the one guy I need to take profit. But trust me, you might have a bit of regret time but ultimately when we get back into that bear market you'll feel good an example time remember those glory days top with you no matter where you went it's not going on a date or anything like that. i've got to get my laptop out in the trezor because science put a telegram notification out i used to take 10 grand a month out in pro a week sorry in profit and time and people thought i was an idiot for it and i did as well because time was flying it was four thousand five thousand ten thousand fourteen thousand whatever it was it seemed stupid and then suddenly we found out that the seafood was not a nice guy and it went down to a hundred dollars or whatever well at the time i felt like an idiot for taking profit but that is now a good story to be had because it happened so quickly we went from 14k to 2k in about six weeks um so yeah you know taking that profit as, as much as it might pain you at the time taking some profit on the way is going to make it a lot easier for you to be on the right side of that 50 percent okay let the other guy be your exit liquidity. Let him do what he needs to do, or her. Um, I, I believe females are much better traders, so they'll probably be more of the 50% that win. Um, convince yourself you'll be able to see when the top of the market is. Yep, yeah, we've all drawn the log logarithmic charts. Now, we know the top is 137,169.72 pence, or cents. So I won't bother taking any profit till then because it will hit it. Or... We know it's going to be the 1st of December 2025, so it's fine. I'll just wait till then. Bollocks, we don't know it, sorry. We don't know um, when it's going to be. So come on, let's just not let greed take over where it needs to be. We'll miss the top. It's okay to miss the top, okay? It's okay to have that feeling of regret. It, <laughs> regret's just part of being a trader, but you'll only regret it for a short amount of time, particularly once that money's back in your account, particularly once you promise your kids or whatever that trip to Disney or then you're doing it all right I know it's a bit noddy me saying it but trust me after two relatively failed cycles I feel like I know what I'm talking about here and you'll never do this but that's that's the nirvana isn't it that state of nonchalance right last four weeks been pretty exciting as a cat's holder hasn't it you know we've gone from what one cent to 12 cents anyone be nonchalant about it bollocks I'd say I'm sorry you can't not be excited about what's just happened there because it is exciting, of course it is. We don't know if this is a start of the bull or just a milli rally, but we can use the last four weeks as a bit of an experience of, are we feeling pretty greedy about this? I don't know. Anyone taken any profits yet? I've not. Oh, there we go. There's one here, two heroes here, well done. Um, okay, well, I feel like a, you could have told me that before and I didn't have to do this. <coughs> so let's not worry about being nonchalant, but I think we should be mentally strong. Now, I stole this from Twitter, so I can't really claim it's my own. I mean, I made the slides myself, but I stole everything else. But a mentally strong person that we aim to be can move on, okay? We don't waste time with regret. We don't waste time on the mistakes we made, and we don't waste time on the trades that didn't go our way. We embrace that change, okay? We welcome the change. We welcome the change in narrative, and we welcome the challenges that come with that. Mentally strong people can do that. This went faster in my head. Um, yeah, we, a mentally strong person can be happy regardless of it because any of the mistakes they made, one, they don't waste the energy on it, but two, they, they accepted it as part of the consequence of whatever trade it was they were going in there, which I think is stealing that next slide. Kind nature. I, I think mentally strong people are kind, and that, that's going to sort of, come down to this last point as well. But I think mentally strong people can, can sort of help others, can, can take the fact that they are so secure in whatever position that they have taken, that they have the capacity to help others. 
but also they're not afraid to speak up against the narrative of what everyone else is saying. So that person that is saying, I think we're close to the top of the market when everyone else is screaming, it's going to 300K. Um, take calculated risk. I'm going to beat this motion to come through. We've got to take risks. We're in crypto, okay? We, the fact that we're in crypto, it is a risk. But that's it. We're not going to make any money without taking some risk. But a mentally strong person can work through the logic of whatever risk it is. And they're willing to accept the consequences. And I'll give you an example of not taking calculated risks. In the last bull run, I got suckered into the DeFi 2.0. And I found myself running home as quick as I could to place a trade, to, to buy an asset, because I was like, it's going to move, it's going to move. I wasn't taking any calculated risks there. The worst thing was, it was all on the Ethereum network. So I was buying $500 of an asset and paying $700 in gas fees. I then had to pay $700 to sell it. So I'm already $1,400 down. There was no calculated risk that this thing had to 3x before I even made any money. But, you know, because I was just sucked into it. So if I was a bit stronger, I would have probably walked home. And on the walk home, gone, that's probably not a good idea. Um, and then this one, I, if you can be this person, I think that's it, that's it. A mentally strong person celebrates the success of others, okay? We don't resent, we're not envious of them, of their success. Those of you that 100% it into Kaz, my, I doff my hat, okay? Honestly, that's the move, you know, brilliant. My measly single figure percentage, uh, Kaz is doing fantastically well as well. I'm happy with that, but I'm happy for you guys. Happy for Siam, happy for the egg holders. Everyone, you know, it's brilliant to see that that's done. Try not to resent others because they're on their own journey. You know, it doesn't matter what your journey is, but celebrating that, not wasting that energy and everything. So that's, that's what I want to be, that. I mean, 2025, when you all turn up in your Lambos and I'm in my, I don't know, my Ford car or whatever, I might resent you then, but. <laughs> This one's for Siam. Uh, that's, a, that's a little geek club joke there. Um, okay, so plan. I know we have to talk about it, but you do need to plan. I talk about this every other week, and I'm sorry, but I will continue to do it because I want you lot to be successful. I want our group to be the 50% and the other group to be the group of failures. So we need to understand it, but it helps us to control our emotions if we can plan because we can actually start to think about what it's going to be and it'll give us a narrative and a, a place to start when greed and envy and all those other deadly sins start to kick in. Um, but I, I would say don't worry about the end game, particularly. It's not about I'm going to just exit at that point. The plan needs to be what I'm doing to get there. And whether it's 12 months, 18 months, 24 months, however you decide the bull run length is going to be, you need to work your way through what that plan is. And so I into. It's not that it's in stone, it's written in sand. What I mean by that is it can be editable. It doesn't have to remain a plan. It just needs to be something that you can work from. Now, I'd recommend writing it down for a couple of reasons. One, I think there's a psychological benefit of just writing something down, taking the time to write it down. One, it helps you to remember it, but two, it can be referred to later. You write a plan today, and then 18 months' time when greed's fully set in, if you hadn't have written it down, written it down sorry, I should have said, you will subconsciously change what that plan was to fit where you want it to be now. Whereas if you've written it down in the cold light of day before the greed kicks in, yeah, it may still change, but at least you knew what your plan was to start off with. And so you're not making those unconscious amendments uh, to it. You can make conscious amendments because you've fallen for greed. That's absolutely fine. But at least it gives you something to reflect back on. But ultimately, it needs to be your, yeah, going back, it needs to be your risk, your goals, your timelines. Don't worry about what I'm doing. Don't worry about science. I know I've ruined your slide at 17, 15, where you said, just copy this. Um, but uh, yeah, Simon and I disagree all the time. Uh, and it is likely to alter. Of course it is. Mine's going to alter. Uh, I'm, I'm heavily invested in Polkadot at the moment. And there's a lot of people in the community at the moment that are not happy with the way that it's run. And it's just come out over the last week. And I need to now decide whether or not I want to be as exposed as I am to that. Because some of them are making some very valid points. And I'm going to spend the next week or so, actually, I need to spend four weeks because I've already stake it. It takes 28 days. But, you know, so my plan may change. I may have to. I may YOLO into, into CAS instead, right at the top. Um, 
I'll be your exit liquidity. <laughs> Funnily enough, a few suggestions. I'm not going to write a plan for you, but potentially some bad ideas of plans. This is where I actually don't think about what I'm going to say to I say. I didn't mean to link these two, but here we go. Um, I would suggest that it is a bad idea to YOLO, you only live once, in or out of the market in one go. So setting yourself a plan, I will exit the market fully when it hits 100K. Yes, it's a plan. And I know from that plan, I know what your target is, what your timeline is, and basically what your risk appetite is. But that's probably going to lead to regret. Because unless you hit the top of the market, you're going to regret that decision. Or you're going to regret that you missed it because it got to 99,000. If you are going to plan, I would have some sort of phasing to that. doesn't matter what it is. I don't care what percentage. But just going into the market in one go and coming out of the market in one go is not going to help you with the emotions. Not going to help you have been happy with other people's success. Um, so I, I have target goals, stage removal. So those of you that are in Discord, for those of you that do follow me on the Avenger calls, you've seen that I've done my profit taking for a few of the, the tokens. And well, I'm not going to go through them all, but there's a level basically in the altcoins where I effectively, when it has 5x from its current value, and trust me, alts have bled so hard over the last year, a 5x is nowhere near all time high. But at a 5x, I'll take 20% out. Why do I take 20% out? Well, 20% at 5x, 100%. That's my initial investment. I mean, this is what I do for a living, so I need to live day to day. Seems like a safe number to do. I still get 80%. That's already 5x. Yes, I have some other phased exits, but generally, I leave about 60% in for the blow off top, and then we'll see where it goes, and I'll accept that I won't hit the top. But I've already taken 40% out, anywhere from 5 to 10x. I mean, it's not a bad return, and I've got some money. Now, you don't have to automatically take it back to the bank. You may just put it to the side to reinvest in something else. That's whatever your plan is. But taking profits is just part of what I want to do. And I'm trying to be public with you guys. So they're all pinned in Discord. For one, there's some accountability for my actions. And you can follow it and be like, have you taken your profit? And then if I haven't, because I'm just full of shit, you can call me out on it. Or remind me that I need to. We'll have to wait and see. That's it. Final point. Don't worry. We're almost done. 36 minutes. Just come on, guys. We've got to keep going, okay? It's not about giving up. You know, we've gone through, for those of you that have been in the community for a year, we've gone through the pain of 2022. And 2022 will go down in the Alan, Alan's? annals of history. That's the word I was trying to say. I almost said annals. Um, <laughs> It's such a bad year, but we've made it. I mean, Jesus, what we went through, the rebasing DAOs, to then follow up with the fact of terror, and then three arrows capital, and then Sam Bankman free last Christmas. You know, but we're still stuck it through. So to give up now, to not pay attention to what you're doing now, is just going to end in disaster. Don't let the pain and the growth that we did in 2022 go to waste by now deciding that you don't need to pay attention to what you're doing. I mean, we, we did. We survived that to pave the path, sound like a politician then, um, to success. You know, we've still got, the mission is only half complete. We're aiming what, for the moon? And to get there, this man told me, I mean, he speaks fluent Latin, per ad astra, the motto of the Royal Air Force, through adversity to the stars. Well, if we want that moonshot, we've still got pain to come and we need to, we need to get there. But I assure you, we do that, you learn to manage your greed, and the next time we get together, I'll do this presentation instead. <laughs> All right? And maybe in the cuddle in 2024, we can plan what we're going to buy in 2025. That's it, that's it. 38 minutes.